Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, another one of our conferences that we are able to do. Uh, we welcome those of you who are from Glendale Baptist Church and Calvary Baptist Church and also anybody else uh, that is participating in the broadcast today. Today, we are privileged to uh, interview another Glendale swordsman by the name of Brandon Long. Uh, I had the privilege of being with Brandon when he was growing up at uh, Glendale Baptist Church, and God did an unusual thing in his life to where he led him to plant a church in Reynosa, Mexico. Uh, he had been part of several annual mission trips that Glendale Baptist uh, Church had undertaken every year uh, since the 1970s, and God gave him a specific heart uh, for Mexico, planted a church down there. I had the privilege of visiting there uh, this past November. They've just recently completed a building and installed electricity. Um, and so at the Iglesia Batista La Gracia, if I got that anywhere near right. Uh, Brandon, welcome to the broadcast today. Tell us a little bit about how you ended up in Reynosa and what the Lord is doing right now. Sure. Well, um, Glendo supported for a long time Brother Calvin Namkin. And uh, he planted churches all over the Mexican Republic in all 32 states, several churches in each state. And um, I guess you could only say providentially, I had planned a mission trip with someone who used to work with Brother Calvin, and it didn't work out. And I had a lot of time to kill uh, because I was already in uh, Texas, South Texas, and I had, you know, three weeks to kill. And uh, I ended up going on a mission, uh, a mission group with, uh, with a, a team that was going in Southern Tamaulipas. And uh, I got uh, connected with some local churches in the Valley, which is near McAllen, Mission, Texas. And um, then I met some missionaries who were in Monterey, and they had a Bible Institute. And I wanted to go there to sort of adapt myself. I already knew Spanish since I was a teenager. I spoke Spanish. And uh, I wanted to just adapt a little more and uh, master the language a little more and get you know accustomed to the culture. And uh, I went there for a semester, and I came back. And uh, I stayed with Brother Calvin and Miss Emily Namkin when Brother Calvin had just started to get real sick. And um, sort of uh, through people who were going to the church that they attended in Mission, Texas, I found out that there aren't very many, you know, Bible-believing churches in Reynosa, which is just across the river. Mm -hmm. um, and we knew some people who had attended some churches there. And, you know, the Lord just worked it out to where there was actually a house for rent on the same street as some of these people that we knew in Reynosa, in the middle of this area that there are really no churches anywhere. There are some churches on the other side of town, but on this side of town, there aren't many solid you know, Bible churches. We have a lot of charismatic churches and Jehovah's Witness churches, but we don't have any, um, you know, any real Protestant Baptist churches. So um, I rented that house and uh, the Lord has you know, been good since, started a church and uh, it's just grown little by little. Yep. Well, Brandon, uh, um, you know, we just got to meet on the Zoom call just a few minutes ago, and uh, um, I have a great affinity for the area where you are. Um, took five trips there in the late 80s and um, are so grateful for the ministry you're carrying on uh, in the area that's there. Um, tell us a little bit about um, how everything in your life, your ministry, your preparation prepares you for this particular moment and uh, of dealing with the COVID crisis and how you continue to reach out and minister right now. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's anything that prepared me specifically for a, you know, an outbreak of a massive virus that would shut our churches down. Um, this is something that's totally new to, I never expected anything like this. Right. To happen. And I think we're all kind of in the same boat where, you know, right. we're just going along with ministry and we had our plans to, you know, to outreach and everything. And, uh, this has just kind of changed the ball game for, you know, an indefinite amount of time. Right. Um, but as far as preparation and what I, what I think is helping right now is our faith and the Lord's promise to take care of his church. Amen. Um, you know, he's promised that the gates of hell won't prevail against it. And, uh, you know, reading church history, we read about a lot of similar situations where people have had to deal with, you know, pandemics and, you know, massive disease and everything. And we've been really blessed in this, you know, last century or two to just not have very much of that, you know, for any extended period of time. But uh, I would say that um, just being born in the time that I was in the 90s, I have an adequate understanding of technology, I think, to be able to reach out a little bit to people. Yeah. Um, the culture is really different. You know, we don't have 
we have cell phones, we have electricity, um, but it, there's not a church culture that embraces a lot of that in Mexico. So it's kind of weird, you know, for a lot of people to say, well, we'll watch church online or we'll, we'll watch church on the television. Um, so we're trying to encourage our church members to do that. Uh, in Reynosa, the part of Mexico where I live, there's a huge population, Brother Barry saw, I, I don't remember if we went and saw all the new houses that are being built all over the city, but um, you know, it, it's estimated that there'll be over a million people in this little, you know, little town within the next couple of years. There might already be because, you know, we're just now taking the census for 2020. But, um, you know, it, Mexican culture is a really, it's really family oriented. Um, as far as church culture, it's really important to have physical contact, to be able to see people and to talk to people. So it's really challenging. Um, nobody is taking the quarantine seriously here in Reynosa, which is, you know, it's bad. In other parts of Mexico, they're, you know, a lot more locked down, like in Monterey or in Mexico City. But we don't really have any rule of law in Reynosa right now. The cartels have run off most of the local police. So, like, Brother Barry, I don't know if I probably drove crazy and nobody ever, you know, pulled me over or anything. You did drive crazy, but I'm used to that. I grew up with Brother Richard Oldham. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, like when Brother Barry was here, uh, we, I was actually in a, a wreck with the church van and we waited for like five hours for the police to show up and nobody ever showed up. So we just left, um, you know, and it was just, uh, it was just super complicated, but um yeah, I, I don't know if I have any specific preparation for this moment, but uh, we do as a church. Uh, I'm trying to upload sermons and messages. And, um, you know, there are a lot of American churches who have sort of like a Hispanic uh, church that are sharing services. And that's been helpful to share, you know, through Messenger and everything. Yeah. Um, but right now, the best thing that we can do and, you know, what I'm praying about is just trying to keep contact with people to encourage people to let them know I'm praying for them. And I've been sick this last week, and we don't have any way to check right now. Um, the doctors aren't letting people in my age group or younger check to see if they have the virus. So I've kind of had to quarantine myself. Um, so it's it's just uh, it's something I never expected. Um, but I, I believe the Lord is is doing it with a purpose and with a reason, and uh, you know just trusting in Him and His promises to the church. Absolutely. As you mentioned in your conversation uh, a second ago, man, we did get to go around and see uh, several of the homes where your church families live and uh, share meals with them and see the different neighborhoods and to see the, the way that you drive for better and for worse for the kingdom of God. Uh, yeah. But brother, I'm thankful for the unique and challenging and in some cases dangerous ministry that the, that the Lord has given to you, that he's protected you, that he's seen fit to grow his church uh, I'm proud of I'm proud of how God is using you. What are some specific ways that we can pray for you? And then I'll uh, have, ask Brother David to close us in prayer with that. Yeah. Um, well, firstly, just pray for the church and pray that you know whatever the devil would use for evil, the Lord would use it for good here, especially with this quarantine um, and our services and everything that have been canceled. Pray that um, the Lord would enable us in a in a way that we're not able to naturally to to minister to people and to, you know, to, to disciple people because this is just something so new to us. Um, pray for safety. Uh, there have been a lot of shootings in my neighborhood just this past week. Um, I don't know if that's related to, you know, everything being shut down and, you know, there's nothing to do. Uh, uh, but pray for safety, pray for the church, um, pray for the Lord to, to provide in this time. The border has been closed and, uh, you know, that could be difficult in the future if this thing lasts uh, for, you know, uh, an indefinite amount of time. I don't know how support would work, but um, just pray for that. And uh, more than anything, I would ask that you pray for the church here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, why don't, we, why don't we take just a moment to pray and uh, lift up these things to the Lord together, okay? Sure. Father, we're so grateful for the opportunity to talk with Brandon today, and Lord, I thank you for his work and his ministry and his heart and his desire to see uh, Mexico come to Christ. And Father, we pray for the work in Reynosa, and uh, Father, we pray for uh, individuals who are inside of his church, and we pray for their safety. 
We pray for their discipleship. We pray for their continual witness for the gospel. Well, we pray this for all of our churches that we would not uh, look at this moment as a time to bunker in. Um, but Lord, this is a great time to share the gospel. People are searching and they are longing. And Lord, we pray that the gospel, that the gospel message would be proclaimed from our churches. Father, we pray for uh, Pastor Brandon. We pray for his support. We pray for um, those that work alongside him. Or we pray for his health. We pray that you would keep him safe in that. Lord, most of all, we pray that your church would remain pure and it would be a powerful witness to the glory of God. And so, Father, we, um, we know that you've given us this moment, this stewardship in time. And, Father, we pray that we are wise with it. And, uh, Lord, the, the reshaping of, of churches everywhere. Father, we pray that we would uh, continually seek your face and, uh, and learn from our ways and proclaim your name to a lost and dying nation and the nations. And so we lift that to you. Pray as we celebrate on Easter that uh, we have an incredible uh, experience of worship and a great time of proclamation of the name of Christ being risen from the dead. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Brandon. Uh, use that ironing board in the background. I'll trust you. Thank <laughs> you.